Okay, as per request, um, I'm going to cover this example from the SOA questions. Um, this is some of the details we were given. Um, I've just created a couple of random variables. I have x, which represents the value of bid 1. Uh, y is going to represent the value of bid 2. Uh, we're told that both of these random variables, well, they're continuous and they're distributed uniformly. So, as usual, when you have some sort of situation regarding a joint density function, I think it's a good idea to draw a picture. And when you're told something, um, two random variables have joint density, which is uniform, you're absolutely going to need that picture because you don't want to do any integration. With uniform random variables, you would want to avoid integration as much as possible, especially for joint density problems. We're just going to look at areas, we're going to look at some geometry. So it's going to save us some time, and I hope that it will be quite convincing um, from the picture. So, uh, what else do we have? Uh, we're told that um, when the value of the bets differ by less than or equal to 20, well, let's start with this one. When they differ by, actually, I think it's included here. Although it doesn't matter, when they differ by 20 or more, right, then we um, we basically accept the lower bet, right? Then in this case here, the implication is that uh, the lower bet is accepted. The lower bet is taken. Um, when the value of the two bets differ uh, by less than 20, um, then what's the word they use here? Uh, we consider the bets further. We consider further. So this is the general setup. And the question wants me to find what is the probability that we consider the bets further. So the main thing that I think you may get mixed up with here is just how to set this up. The important thing, if you listen to the, the way that the question is worded, they differ by less than 20. You don't know which one of these is bigger or smaller, so you have to use absolute value. If you don't use absolute value, you will not get this right. Okay, so there's a lot of um, questions like this for the exam P that are worded like this. Whenever they say differ by, okay, you don't know which random variable is greater than uh, than the other. You have no idea, so you have to use absolute value. It's very important. All right, so the question uh, wants me to find the probability that this is the case, right? We want to know uh, what is the probability that the absolute value of y minus x, my two random variables which represent the values of the bids, uh, is less than 20. So I want to know what is this value. All right. This is where you want to go to the picture. And I've already had the density function here because you know that for a uniform uh, density function, uh, it's just one over the area of the region. This is the area of the region because I know that x is between 2,000 and 2,200. Y is between 2,000 and 2,200. Okay, the area of this region, it's actually a square, right? And so uh, it's one over 200 squared. And 200 squared, last time I checked, is 40,000. So the density function is one over the area. All right. How am I going to compute this? Well, I want to use pictures. I like pictures. Let's see what we can do. Um, this is equal to, I claim, okay? Well, I mean, I'm not even claiming this, but this is just a property of absolute value, right? You need to use this sort of thing. If I have something that has the absolute value less than 20, by definition, and it's not hard to convince yourself this is true, but basically by definition for absolute value, it's not really even definition. I mean, just logically speaking, it has to work out this way, right? If the absolute value of a difference is less than 20, this directly means, this is equal to the probability uh, that negative 20, and I'll just write it out, negative 20 is less than y minus x is less than 20, get y by itself, which is equal to the probability uh, that x minus 20 is less than y is less than x plus 20. I know inequalities are kind of scary sometimes, but remember you only switch inequalities when you multiply divide by negative or take reciprocals. Haven't done that, so I just got y by itself. 
So what am I interested in? I'm interested in when is y greater than the line x minus 20, but also less than the line x plus 20. Now you're going to have to do a little bit of convincing, uh, as usual, to figure out the ordered pairs which intersect this square. But I know you can handle it. What is the line y equals x minus 20? Let me draw it. Now this is not the scale, but here is y equals This is the line, y equals x minus 20. y equals x minus 20. I've made it dashed because from your algebra classes back in the day, you know that if you're not including, you have to make it dashed because I'm not, I'm not interested in actually on the line, right? For continuous case, you're gonna see it doesn't matter, but let's, be, um, let's try to be proper when we can. Uh, here, I need to graph the line y equals x plus 20. All right, well, the y-intercept is 20, so it's a slightly above the origin right here. Okay, x plus 20 is about here. Okay, so that is the line. That is the line. y equals x plus 20. Now, let me go ahead and uh, get rid of our density function up here. Okay, hopefully you realize and understand that's what it is. We don't need it there right now. Okay, I'm not even going to compute any integrals. No integrals whatsoever. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for when is y less than the line up top, x plus 20, and greater than the line down below, x minus 1. I'm looking for this region. It has to also lie inside of the square. So what I'm looking for is that. That's what I want. How am I going to compute that? Well, I absolutely don't want to compute uh, that area because it's not a nice geometric figure. But what I can do is I can compute these two areas. And there's some symmetry. I'm going to compute this. What is the area of this? So I want to compute the area of that triangle. Okay, so this area is what I want. Now this is where you need to actually do a little bit of convincing. Okay, I claim, I claim that, I mean, just do some algebra. What is this point right here? This point right here, I claim is the point, um, the x coordinate is 2, 0, 2, 0. The y coordinate is 2,000. Okay. Also find this point right here. That point right there uh, is 2, 2, 0, 0. And the y coordinate is uh, 2, 1, 8, 0. Okay. Just do some algebra. You can figure that out. Why would I care about that? The reason that I care about that is, uh, let me come down here. What is the area of that triangle? The area, you know the area of a triangle. All I need is the length of the legs, right? And basically this is a right triangle, which is also isosceles, right? Because uh, these are the same length, okay? So 180 and 180, which means the area is one half times the base times the height. They're both 180, so one half 180 squared. I claim we're pretty much done, actually. All right, we're pretty much done because uh, I have two of them, okay? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take this area plus this area, but I don't want that, right? I don't want this area plus this area, I want the inside area. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take the area of the whole thing and I'm gonna subtract this triangle, subtract this triangle. In fact, why don't I even just do this? Why don't I call this triangle one, uh, triangle two? So what is my probability? My probability, is then equal to the entire area, the entire area, which is, I'm just going to write it as 200 squared, which is 40,000. The whole area minus triangle one minus triangle two divided by the whole area. Just think about geometrically why this gives you what you want. Remember what we're after here. We're after the area of this weird sort of elongated diamond thing. I just made that up. I don't know. That's what it looks like to me, kind of. Okay? Think about why this works. This is exactly what we're finding here. We're finding that area. So, let's just compute this when we're done with it. These triangle 1, triangle 2 have the same area. They're both 1 half 180 squared, right? So, this is equal to 200 squared minus 1 half 180 squared, excuse me, minus 1 half 180 squared. 
all over 200 squared. And what you should get here is exactly 0 0.19. That's it. That takes care of it. Uh, tell me what you think. I hope this was helpful. Uh, and Joe, thanks for requesting the video. Uh, I will cover the other examples you requested as soon as I can. I'm going to start making FM videos soon. It's like a totally different way of thinking. I'm at annuities. I'm kind of getting smoked right now, but I'm starting to get it. So FM videos coming soon. Uh, and uh, please keep requesting videos. Thank you.